Hey guys, today I have very exciting news. This is good news, I believe. Magic the Gather Gathering is a MMO now. So a MMO is when a bunch of players play in real time and they play either with each other or against each other. It's a lot of fun. This is the correct trend. Everything is going digital. As much as I love my local game store, people are just not showing up. And there's a lot of other options. Uh, when Injustice 2 came out, I didn't go to the game store because I was like, oh, well, I'm going to play this video game instead. When Fire Emblem came out, same type of deal. So when you have a MMO, it's a way to enjoy magic digitally. And that is very important. So one of the takeaways I have, I speak at a lot of conferences. I Last year, I went to Ireland for a Google conference and they were talking about the ease of access, right? You want to give the customer, that would be us, the ability to play the game as often as they want with very good, with the feeling like they want to continue to play, almost like an addiction. I mean, it is a video game, right? So when you have Magic the Card game, you can't do that. There are certain times the store is open. There are certain times magic is available. There are certain times that your FNM won't launch because there's not enough people. With a physical card product, there are limitations in who can play when they can play. I've been on a record of saying that I work from 9 until 6, so it's really hard for me to get to FNMs at 6.30, right? If I didn't work or I had a job that allowed me to take Fridays off, then I won't, wouldn't really have any complaints, but a lot of my friends are in the same situation. Some of them are doctors, some of them are lawyers, and a lot of, the, of them are in, in oil and gas. So we just play at my home because we can't make the FNM, but even if we were to want to make the FNM, I think it would just be better to have a digital product so we're not restricted to just Friday nights or Sundays for EDHs. We can play whenever we want to in this multi universe. So this strikes me as very, very smart, uh, mainly because you can be a planeswalker. You already have defined traits and aspects that have been developed for the magic base. So it's not like we would not know what the characters do. We would all know, hey, a black planeswalker, you probably have to sacrifice some life, some HP to play your mega spells, maybe you're a zombie planeswalker. So I like it. Um, I like team play. I like when the MMO I'm most familiar with, because I watched the anime, I finally watched the anime, is Sword Art Online. And that one obviously is a extremely popular anime. It's a theme that people really liked and enjoyed. Uh, that's why it's so popular, right? So for Magic to have something like that, where we would level up our characters, we would play new spells with our characters, we would grind out the game, kind of like, wow. So when I was at NYU, my I did orientation. I did 14 orientation groups and 14, um, teach, I was teaching assistant to 14 different classes. And we had little batches of uh, WoW, War of Warcraft. And... It was really fun. Uh, it was just a ton of fun. And our whole orientation leadership group would just log on onto your server and whoever was on was on at that time. And we did that for the one month subscription. It was a blast. So I do feel that this is the correct trend. We should move to digital products. I don't believe this will be digital next. It doesn't make sense for this to be Digital Next, mainly because Digital Next should be a card game, not like an MMO. So MMO is not a card game. It's like Dungeons and Dragons, I believe, has an MMO. And I play, I used to play WoW. League of Legends, not really, I guess kind of an MMO. So I will throw up the definition of MMO later, but and it makes a lot of sense to me. Maybe have like a Fire Emblem type, type of game and the whales can support the non-whales. I'm used to that model where a certain group of people pay a lot of money for totally useless junk, like completely useless. I will be on record for saying that I spend a lot of money on digital products that are just slightly better than what you can get as a free-to-play player. 
And then the whales who spend 500, sometimes a thousand dollars a month on this game will subsidize the rest of the people who then don't need to spend any money. That is a digital game. Uh, for a MMO, it's more like a subscription based. As I've mentioned previously, that's what I expect them to move to. A subscription base is a very positive sign because maybe we get subscription based magic cards and instead of buying individual magic cards, we pay $10 a month and we get access to all the magic cards so we can play, build any deck we want. That's honestly ideal. And then whenever a new set comes in, then we would get the new set. And everyone will get the new set for $10 a month because why should we restrict? And that's my biggest problem with Magic Gathering Online. I have two pro major issues. You have way too much restriction in terms of flexibility, what decks you can build based on how much money you make. And the second one, the graphics are just very terrible. Like I just cannot look at the Magic Online graphics and play the game. Like I just get upset. As a graphic designer, I just get really upset when I look at Magic Online and, you know, yeah, there's bugs and stuff. That's all bad. But the main thing is, my goodness, it looks like we're in 1995. The style of UI and user interface and UX has changed so much since 1995. And for them to not hire one person to tell them, wait a second, we probably, I mean, there's a lot of big fixes. I'm not talking about a big fix. I'm talking about overlays. I'm talking about fonts it's still difficult to read cards online it's like ridiculous like I'm, i was playing hearthstone and it's like all the cards are super easy to read and so a mmo is a massively multiplayer online game it is online game which is capable of supporting large numbers of players typically from hundreds to thousands simultaneously in the same instance um yeah, open, yeah. So it's a open place, kind of like Zelda, where everyone runs around and does stuff, kind of like Skyrim. I, Skyrim is probably an MMO. I don't really know, like some people say it have different definitions of it, but Skyrim is a classic MMO. And most video games actually are, where you just run around, after you beat the main game, you can just run around and just kill people and team up with people to take down bosses. I like it. I think it's going to be great. And overall, I'm happy that Magic is moving digitally because that's the that's where growth is. Like if you look at card game growth, I don't know if anyone would say, hmm, let's invest in paper, paper card games. That's got to be the future of entertainment, right? Newspapers are doing really poorly right now. Traditional media has done poorly for a while. TV, like I, I can run you stats, but... You just got to Google it and you will f find out that digital is the future. So when I wanted to play Fire Emblem, I just open my phone and play it and that's it. That's it. Like, you know, I can play anytime I want. I can play before I go to bed. I can play when after I have a dinner with my significant other and there would be people, there'll be other people playing the game where I can compete against in the arena. And for a MMO right now, I'm not playing any MMOs right now, but you can log in anytime you want. And you don't need to wait for a bunch of your team members. I mean, they can come, you can have a group, but then you just go out and you explore and you can do stuff on your own if you wanted to. You can have other friends. And should this actually happen? Like a lot of stuff has been promised to us, right? That doesn't happen. Like the magic movie. Like who remembers that we were supposed to get a magic movie? It's supposed to be by Fox and it just never happened. If we get this, I will play this and I will put this on my YouTube channel. There is a reason that video games do far better than card games on YouTube because visually it's more appealing. I refuse to, to make Magic Online. Like Magic Duels is the closest I'll come to. It's a very good product. I like it. Image-wise, they do a good job and I like the fonts and semi-readable. Although the image quality is extremely low. I don't know why they don't fix that, but I would not stream Magic Online because, and not many people do. Even Brian Kibler decided, okay, this is not going to make money. I'm going to stop. Brian Kibler at one time was the most famous Magic player, or one of them. I would probably put him one or two and LSV as the other one. I mean, people bought his play match. People loved him. He was called the mo most handsome man in Magic. And he gave it. He gave it all away because Magic Online was not capable of generating him enough revenue that Hearthstone was. 
If Magic creates a good digital product for content creators to make videos on, and I will spend a ton of money, right? So I'm used to whaling. In the term, they call it a whaling. That's not a negative term. I'm not referring to like actual whales. But whaling is when someone spends a lot of money on a game. I refuse to spend a lot of money on Magic Online because it's just very, very displeasing to me. But if the MMO is even semi-viable, I will spend money on it. I'll open the chest and, I mean, there's, there's many things they can sell you, right? Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.